I stared down at my beautiful white gown and the giant rock on my finger. I couldn't believe I was marrying the most handsome man in the world. Then suddenly, the door burst open. I turned around to see my worst nightmare. Wait, wait, wait. Before we get into all this, let's circle back around to the beginning. I'm Jordan from California. Please like and subscribe to hear my story. I grew up with a single mom who was a high school teacher. We didn't have a lot of money, and my older sister, Cass, was always a huge brat about it. My friend Becky got the newest iPhone at school, and I need it. I'm sorry, sweetie. I can't afford it. And you just got a new phone two years ago. Two years? Mom, do you know anything about phones? Jeez, your phone works fine. And no new camera is going to fix that ugly personality. Ugh, this family sucks. Mom always felt guilty that she couldn't provide us with the best things, so I never asked for anything expensive. But when I started seventh grade, I went through a crazy growth spurt. Mom took me shopping, but she kept looking worriedly at the price tags. Mom, I don't mind getting secondhand clothes. Oh, sweetie, no. We can make it work. Really, it's fine. I like thrifting anyway. Jordan, you're an angel. One day the universe will give you everything you ever wanted. Later that night, when Cass saw my clothes, her eyes popped out of her head. Wow, how could mom afford all these nice brands for you? These are secondhand genius. Ew, gross. You better not tell anyone at school. It'll completely ruin my reputation. You're committing social suicide, girl. Is something seriously screwed up in your brain? I'm not letting mom go broke so you can impress people who don't even like you. One day in ninth grade, I was walking back home when I saw a girl going bonkers on a guy, hitting him with her purse and screaming while he tried resisting her blows. Can you please stop? Hey, ow. Listen to me, miss, I'm not a thief or a pervert. Ow! She smacked his head one last time and walked away, and the boy brushed himself off. Then suddenly, he caught me looking at him. I swear, I didn't do anything wrong. What happened? I'm an idiot. A pen fell out of her bag, and I just wanted to return it. I kept calling her, but she didn't hear me because of her stupid headphones. Then I thought I'd just slip it into her bag, but that's when she noticed me and lost her mind. Anyway, you want it? We started talking, and it turned out his name was Zach, and he'd just moved into my neighborhood. And soon, we were hanging out almost every day. We had a ton in common, like our love for hiking and video games. Even Cass got along with him and sometimes joined in for movie nights. Once in 11th grade, the three of us were going to a party and Cass came down in a cheerleader's outfit and she wasn't even a cheerleader. Uh, why are you wearing that? There's a new guy in my class who'll be at the party and he's the most genuine person I've ever laid eyes on. It's time to introduce myself. So you haven't even spoken to him yet? How do you know he's genuine? I wasn't talking about his personality, idiot. I was talking about the brands he wears. Not a single knockoff. And you know your girl can tell from a mile away. He's the real deal. Cass wasn't kidding about getting that guy's attention. He was surrounded by a bunch of girls, and somehow she thought it would be a good idea to enter the room doing a cartwheel. Except she didn't know how to do one and smacked straight into the glass door. Everyone gave her the weirdest looks, and Zach and I nearly died trying not to laugh as we carried her out of there. She fractured her arm and had to wear a cast for two months. A few weeks later, the town's power went out on a really hot day. Zach just got his driver's license and asked if I wanted to drive a few hours away to a beach for a swim. Of course, but I can't really ask my mom for money. She works all the time, huh? Yeah, she knows I want to go to med school. And I swear, my first paycheck is going to her. You're so amazing and selfless, Jordan. That's why I love you. Uh, love me? I mean, as a friend, <laughs> obviously. Uh, right, <laughs> of course. Come on, let's go. I'll pay for gas and food. It'll be fun. Are you sure? Sure, I'm sure. I just like your company. And that's kind of how it went from there. Zach's parents gave him a hefty allowance every week, and we started going out often to the movies, theme parks, and even concerts. I wanted to get a job to pay for things too, but he insisted it was fine. And it was kind of nice having someone take care of me. I knew you were just like me, sis. You pretend to be better, but your little boyfriend spoils you rotten, and you love it. OMG, Zach is not my boyfriend. He just pays for my things sometimes. Oh, so you're a gold digger. I'm so proud of you. I'm not a gold digger. We're just friends. Oh, really? Is that why you talked him out of dating my friend Ashley? What? You know about that? Ashley heard you tell Zach that she was dumb and high maintenance and he deserved better. Look, if you want him all to yourself, fine. But if you don't like him that way, then let him date someone else. It's not nice to lead people on. Oh, did the Tin Man suddenly grow a heart? Mind your own business. Ashley was dumb and I had to protect Zach. He was too naive and girls like her would totally take advantage of him. But I was only looking out for him as a friend. He wasn't exactly my type. 
I wanted to be a surgeon, and Zach wanted to teach high school social studies. Not that there's anything wrong with it, but I'd seen my mom struggle a lot as a teacher. I didn't want that for my future. Besides, Zach and I were both fine with our relationship. We went to prom together as friends and had the best time ever. Soon college started, and Zach and I lived across campus from each other and met often. One day, I was studying in the library, and I needed a book from the top shelf, but the little step stool under me wobbled and brought down a pile of books with me. Just then, someone came to my side. It was Sean the mysterious and most handsome guy in my class. He always sat in the back, but blew everyone out of the water on tests. I think you may have dropsies, mon chéri. Oh, <laughs> thanks. Come now, you're in my class, yes? Maybe we could be study partners? Um, yeah. Sounds great. When I say Sean was amazing, this guy was amazing. He was brilliant and explained things to me in ways my professors never could. He brought me delicious French pastries and laughed at all my jokes. And let's be honest, I'm not that funny. His parents owned an airline company, and he was going to medical school only because he got bored one day and decided to apply. Everyone wanted to be around Sean, and for the first time in ever, I was popular by association. Only one person didn't like him. He's a total jerk. You're blinded by his swoopy hair and fake accent. I saw him yelling at the teacher the other day for giving him an A instead of an A+. Come on, don't be like that. He's sweet. You can't be serious, Jordan. Zach made it so obvious he couldn't stand Sean. Whenever we hung out together, he sat in a corner and sulked. What is wrong with the little boy, eh? Nothing. He's totally fine. Then why is he crying in the corner like an injured duck? Walk, walk. Now waddle away and let me enjoy my beautiful view. Excuse me? Jordan, aren't you gonna say something? Sean, come on, don't tease him. But Zach, maybe we'll just catch up later? Zach stormed off and I felt kinda bad. But Sean started feeding me chocolate strawberries and everything else left my mind. I hoped Zach would warm up to Sean soon, but he started acting crazy. On one of my dates, I spotted him wearing a stupid disguise and glaring at us from across the restaurant. Another time, he just happened to be at the movies where Sean and I were, and he took the seat between us. Zach fed me popcorn and wiped my face every time I drank soda, and I wanted to punch him. Then one day, Sean arranged a rugby match, and Zach said he wanted to join too. Are you crazy? Do you know how intense it gets? You think I'm not strong enough or man enough, huh? Uh, uh, yeah, they're gonna mash you like a boiled potato. I can play it rough, Jordan. You don't need to worry about me. And then he let out a weird war cry and jumped into the field. Oh man, this was gonna be painful to watch. And of course, he got injured within minutes and I had to take him to the ER for stitches. We started drifting apart and I missed him, but I was really busy with studies and Sean. After graduation, Sean asked me to marry him. And of course, I said yes. I couldn't believe how amazing my life was turning out. Mom threw a little engagement party for us, and Sean's parents even flew in from France. But when I went to introduce myself, I overheard them talking. This place smells like poor people. I thought Sean said she was becoming a doctor. Don't eat anything here. They don't even have chefs. The girl's mom made everything herself. I turned to leave, and of course, Zach was right behind me, and he'd heard everything. Is this really the type of family you want to marry into? I can't do this right now, Zach. I pushed past him and left. I was planning on confronting Sean about his parents' comments. Comments, but wedding planning took over. Cass was my wedding planner, and she was a nightmare to work with. But she did take care of all the arrangements just in time. On my wedding day, I felt anxious. I hadn't really forgotten what Sean's parents had said, or Zach's disappointed face. He'd stopped answering my calls soon after the engagement. Hey sis, what's wrong? You're marrying a freaking prince. Look a little happier. It's just that I am doing the right thing, right? Is this about Zach? I just thought he'd show up is all. I bit back my nerves as the music started playing. Mom and Cass walked me down the aisle together, and I followed. Sean looked gorgeous standing up at the Altar. He smiled at me and I forced one back. But just as I started walking, the doors burst open. Zach was standing in the doorway with a freaking child who was crying at the top of his lungs and then came running to me with open arms. Mommy, please. You said you were gonna get milk for pancakes. You said you'd make pancakes if I stopped pooping in the closet. And I did, Mommy, I did. Please come back. Don't leave me. What the fudge? Everyone was staring at me, and Sean looked furious. I dragged Zach out the door. What do you think you're doing? What is this? You have a child with him? How could you keep this from me? No, what? No, I don't. That's not my kid. How can you say that? How could you just deny your own child?
child and what we mean to each other. Things turned chaotic after that. I knew this girl was trash from the start, humiliating us like this. How dare you? But I'm just glad we found out now and not years down the road. Who are you calling trash, moron? No one speaks about my family like that. Sean, don't you believe me? And do you really have nothing to say to your parents? I knew I was marrying below my station, but you were smart and pretty, and I thought you would learn our sophisticated ways. But this, I won't tolerate. I was clearly wrong about you. I almost punched him, but he left with his parents on his tail. Mom and Cass were handling the guests, and I turned to Zack furiously. How could you do this to me? You just ruined my life! And who the heck is that child? My nephew. And I just saved your life, Jordan. Those people are not you. You care about others. That's what I always loved about you. But you changed when you met that rich jerk. It's none of your business. As my friend, you should be happy that I'm happy. Like you were happy for me and Ashley, or me and Taylor, or me and any of my other girlfriends you convinced me weren't worth dating. Look, that's different. You just wanted me to take care of you while you kept your options open for someone better. Admit it. You can't start blaming me right now, Zach. You've gone too far. I don't want to see you again, ever. Later that week, I found out Sean had flown back back to France and was getting married to this girl his parents had wanted to set him up with. I couldn't believe he moved on so quickly. Cass tried to cheer me up with a junk food movie night, but it wasn't working. I just don't understand how Zack could sabotage me like that. He's supposed to be my best friend. Well, it pains me to break it to you, sis, but you haven't been a very good friend to Zack. What? He's the one who ruined my wedding, remember? The guy has loved you for years, and you knew he did but you led him on all throughout school. He had plenty of girls swooning over him, including me. Wait. You like Zack? Not anymore, but I had a crush on him at one point. Lots of girls did, but he only had eyes for you, and you threw him to the side as soon as someone better came along. I didn't mean to. I just didn't want to lose him. Well, now you've lost him anyway. I knew Cass was right, and I felt so horrible for treating Zack the way I had, but I was still so angry at him. I just wanted to graduate and start fresh, away from all this drama. I finished my residency and became a neurosurgeon at a big hospital. I paid off my student loans and soon gave mom a down payment to buy a cute flat. Cass got married to a rich guy who adored her and moved into a house close to mine. We saw each other every week and life was good. Then one day, I was invited to give a lecture at a local university. I was so nervous and stopped by the coffee shop on campus. I had my face in my speech as I walked away with my drink and ran straight into someone spilling their smoothie all over them. Oh my god, I am so sorry. I- wait, Zach? Jordan, what are you doing here? I'm a guest speaker at the medical school today. What are you doing here? I'm a history professor here. Wow, that's amazing. We sat down to catch up and it was so good to see him again. Hey, listen, I never apologized for bursting into your wedding like that. That really wasn't cool of me, especially using my nephew. No, I'm the one who's sorry for all the years I took advantage of you and I did keep you away from other girls. I was afraid you'd easily fall for someone and she'd take you away. You didn't take advantage of me, Jordan, and I wouldn't have treated someone else the same way. Me taking care of you was my love language language and not just being nice to a friend. You were so good to me. And can I tell you a secret? I think even if you hadn't burst in, I wouldn't have gone through with the wedding. Really? Why not? Because you were right. And Sean and his family are jerks. I'm glad you finally saw it, but I'm sorry I wasn't more supportive. I guess I always liked you and when you started dating Sean, I knew I could never compete with a guy like that. You shouldn't have had to. You were always the better guy. You think we could pick up where we left off? We could go hiking. I'll pack a picnic, just like old times. I'd love that.